How's it going guys? Kyle with Formal Ranch and today I am pretty stoked to talk to you about the Pulsar Thermion 2 LRF XL60. So that's a mouthful. I'm going to refer to it as the XL60 for the remainder of this video. Now bottom line up front for those that don't want to sit through this entire video, this is probably the best performing thermal optic I have used to date on the channel. Now I say that with the caveat that it is a $7,000 optic at the time of putting this video together. So some of you guys may already click away. Some of you guys may be intrigued just to see what it is about this that makes it $7,000. When I review something and test something, I keep in mind the price tag. So if it's a $1,000 thermal optic, I'm gonna critique it at that price tag. This boasting a very hefty price tag of a decent used sedan, I'm gonna judge it like, you know, at that level. So I expect $7,000 of performance. The good news is it's a pretty boring review. I didn't have issues and it performed very well. Now in the rest of the video, I will get into the nitty gritty and the details so that you can draw your own conclusions. If this is worth it to you, or if you should go buy that, uh, you know, 2015 uh, Corolla instead of this optic. But I think this is really catered for those of you that absolutely don't want anything uh, made in China on your platforms. This is made in Europe. It is not made in China. And everything about this feels premium and has performed premium so far. Again, we'll get into those details. But before I get any further, I do got to make you guys aware that we are giving away night vision uh, November 1st. If you're not familiar over on the Formal Ranch Patreon page, we give something away the first of the month, every month. This month happens to be night visions. So best of luck with winning some nods. And I got to give a huge shout out to Warhammer Armaments who sponsors this channel as well as the ones who donated that set of night vision for you guys. So can't thank them enough for giving you guys some exciting giveaway items. And that is done as a thank you to those that are opting to support the channel in case keeping the lights on and this channel running isn't enough. Just know that you do stand to gain some pretty nice freebies from time to time. And lastly, Optics Planet is the support of the channel and it is relevant to this review because this optic was provided by Optics Planet for review. Now, the good news is for you guys, if you're worried about me being biased or sold out to Pulsar, I didn't interact with Pulsar for this video. It was provided as a retail off the shelf scope like what you would purchase. So it wasn't cherry picked by Pulsar. There wasn't that interaction or influence. Optics Planet is supporting this video. Now they take it a step further because you can save 7% off site wise. Sometimes it's worth more depending on different promotions, but code ranch is gonna save you some hard earned money on the fancy toys like this. Okay, so going in logical order, what is included with this? Again, trying to justify that price tag. Well, you get obviously the optic itself and a half decent little carry case with accessories. There are two external batteries that remove from this top turret. So not only is there an internal battery in the main housing of the optic, you actually have two batteries that are swappable and they are hot swappable, meaning that if this battery is running low, it does feed off the turret battery first. You can quickly swap and leave your main reserve battery alone without shutting the scope off. So if you are fortunate enough to have very extended hunts where you can't get to power and you're just really having a good time out there in the wilderness, well, this thing will give you that extended battery life. Now, in addition, you do have an American Defense Manufacturing quick detach mount that was included, which is nice. It'd be a little frustrating after spending this kind of coin on this optic if you still had to shell out additional money for a mount. So they included a mount and it is a reputable and quality mount. For what it's worth, I did test the return to zero functionality. Again, I try to be thorough on these reviews and I had a very good success rate with this thing returning to zero. It was within one MOA. So let's just dive into the noteworthy features. Like I said, this thing is rocking a 1024 by 768 sensor. So you're effectively in the HD space on the thermal spectrum, which that in and of itself is pretty exciting. If you haven't looked through anything beyond a 384 sensor before and you look through one of these for the first time, it's gonna be incredibly difficult to go to those lower core sensors after seeing things so crystal clear through this. Now I have experience with uh, higher cores than this. So I've reviewed the ATN Thor 5, for example, that has a 1280 core. Now I had a pretty good experience with the Thor 5 when I tested it, but I would say the thermal sensitivity and just clarity even at a lower resolution on this Pulsar does kind of outshine my personal experience behind the Thor 5. So just kind of giving you some context, I've tested a great variety of thermal sensors. And when I make the claim, like I did in the intro, that this is probably the best performing thermal optic that I've tested to date, um, I truly mean that. And there's been a large variety. I'm now probably at over 15 to 20 thermal optics that I've got to play with um, regularly uh, in support of this channel. 
So clarity is good, but I mentioned sensitivity. What really impressed me is that when I was checking zero periodically at the range, one of the things I do is I shoot at a six inch steel target at 200 yards. If I'm hitting that, then I, I call it, you know, zero, fairly well maintained in a field environment. So environmental factors changing, I may have fired a, a handful of rounds. It's not a cold bore zero that we're verifying at this point. So if I still make contact with that little six inch target at 200 yards, I'm fairly happy with that in terms of periodic reliability checks. This optic was able to see those steel targets on a 95 degree day in direct sunlight. So thermal does work during the day, but it definitely does not perform as well when you lose that thermal contrast to the environment. So the ideal condition is obviously hog hunting at night, for example, where you have roughly a hundred degree object, that is the hogs, and you have an ambient environment at 80 degrees or less where you have a very good separation of the thermal profile of the environment compared to the living things. Now, on a 95 degree day with the sun baking down on things, everything is hot. Everything is getting blasted by the sun's radiation. This thing could see the steel targets. And it was one of the first thermal optics I had that uh, was able to do so. For example, um, I had the infrared RH25 V2 with me that day. So just out of curiosity sake, I did peek through that to see if I could see the targets and I couldn't see anything. Now that is a $6,000 thermal optic, so it's not a budget optic, and I was purely curious to see if uh, this thing really, if the Pulsar was really just doing that better than the average thermal sensor, or uh, if it was a, it just happened to be conditions where most thermal optics would see it. So a non-budget RH25 V2 sensor, couldn't see it while well, this could. So uh, I did take note of that, that really surprised me and frankly really impressed me. Now there are some conditions where you just lose things to the environment. So on a different day, it was once again in the 90s, the cow was in direct sunlight. I could see the cow uh, through this optic. I could differentiate the cow from the background and environment technically, but it obviously wasn't popping out at me as the only thing glowing because it was actually a lower temperature than some of the hot sand in the foreground. But the imagery itself doesn't get washed out like I've seen on some more budget tier thermal optics. There's 500 yard shots with a thermal. So that's three for three consistently um, because of the resolution this thing gives you. Um, that's pretty awesome. Again, this is 102 degree day outside and I can see the steel target uh, at 500 yards through this thermal optic because of the sensor sensitivity. So uh, yeah, I'd call that pretty acceptable. Now the next thing that's noteworthy is gonna be the intuitive features. So uh, starting from the front, rather than having a front objective lens or the bell that rotates to focus, it has these side focusing levers and they're on each side of the optic. I find that's easier to get to and index compared to, depending on your setup especially, this is a pretty long scope, reaching all the way around and trying to feel for that. Maybe you have a sling or something in the way, this is just a little bit easier than having to fully extend your arm out. I do prefer that. Um, I really did enjoy that on this optic. So just pointing that out in terms of controls. Now the menu system is all accessed through this one button on the left turret here. Uh, a short tap will get you to kind of a quick access menu. A press and hold will get you into the nitty gritty and the details on, uh, on the menu. Now while we're in this uh, category talking about the menu, the zeroing was very, very easy. Again, because it is so sensitive and clear of a sensor, I could see my impacts at 100 yards. I enabled a freeze frame function and just did a drag and drop of that point of aim, point of impact, and then you get a dead nut zero. Um, pretty much right out of the box as long as you're confident with your shot. So it could be a one shot zero and it's perfectly good to go. And you can readily and easily see that impact uh, using this. So that makes life easier. Um, otherwise, there are three buttons on the back. One is to toggle your zoom function. So it, once again, in an intuitive manner, it allows you to not only uh, zoom in with the whole image, 
but you can kind of hold that zoom function and enable a picture in picture mode. Now me as a hog hunter, I like to have the picture in picture window because I will have that top window zoomed in a little bit. That'll be my first shot, typically aiming for a nice, uh, you know, humane headshot. And then once hogs start running, I like already having that zoomed out window so I can pan and maybe take some follow up shots if it's safe to do so. So I do like the picture in picture mode and it is easy to switch back and forth out of. There's also a rangefinder button and a camera recording button. And since the latest update, this rangefinder button, I believe it is, will let you quickly toggle through color palettes uh, with a short tap versus press and hold will play with the rangefinder functionality. Prior to that, you had to change color palettes in the menu system. So they are continuing to support this optic and provide updates that make it even more user friendly. Now on the topic of the rangefinder, that is paired with a huge perk of this device and that is a built-in ballistic calculator. If you haven't played with digital optics or thermal optics as a whole, depth perception can get very confusing. Uh, you don't necessarily know if it's a big animal far away or a small animal close up, so having an onboard rangefinder is very useful. Taking that a step further, having an onboard rangefinder that then puts parameters into a ballistic calculator and tells you exactly where your holds need to be just makes it stupid easy uh, and will help increase your odds of a clean and ethical hunt for those that care about that as well. And it'll make things safer because you're not guessing what your holds need to be at distance. So all good things there when you have a functional ballistic calculator. Hopefully you can hear that over the wind, but we're making some hits on the 500, no problem with that ballistic calculator. That's three for three. So not bad as long as you uh, get your ballistic data and you input it into the scope. Now, originally I couldn't figure out the ballistic calculator and I was getting ready to post the review and let you guys know that it wasn't user friendly. I realized that it's not the Stream Vision 2 app, I believe it is, I'll annotate for uh, connecting to this device, but they actually have a separate ballistics app. Once I figured out that I was in fact the problem, connect to that app, I put in my information. So you're only as good as the information you put in. So you wanna know the parameters of your projectile you're using. Hopefully if you're using quality factory ammo, they will publish that data for you. But then you also really need to know your muzzle velocity. So I used a Garmin C1 Pro or Plus or whatever it's called um, that I picked up from Optics Planet. And I got an accurate muzzle velocity and input it to the scope. And I was very happy with how accurate the ballistic calculator was on this to the extent that I would have zero hesitation using it while hunting. Now on the rangefinder, it used to be one of the nuances that I did not like because when you would range something, there was this big black box that honestly obscured some of your field of view. Again, if, depending on which part of the videos you've skipped around to, Pulsar is continuously supporting this optic and their latest update that they rolled out now puts the ranged information on the top right of the display rather than over the center of the crosshair. I don't know why that was ever seen as a good idea, but I guess they realized that is not the way to go and that has been improved. Now on the topic of reliability, it's pretty boring discussion here. Boring is good for the purposes of reviewing a thermal optic. It means that there was really nothing bad that happened with this optic, nothing to report back. You can see that it is not currently mounted to a platform because the zero was very well maintained uh, and the return to zero was well repeatable with the included American Defense manufacturing mount. So it did actually let me throw it in this case. Um, I have pretty much decided this is gonna be my Mark 12s uh, thermal scope. So when I wanna run the Mark 12 during the daytime, I'll use my daytime optical scope this also has an American Defense manufacturing mount. And then when the lights go down, if I don't feel like throwing a clip on in front and I want the performance of a dedicated optic, then I'm gonna do a swap. So I will actually utilize the included carrying case because the included mount is uh, good enough to do so. So that's just a little method of madness there in terms of how I'm gonna run the scope. Battery life was also very good. There wasn't a single hunt or time using this that I was worried about that battery draining. I can't really quantify what my anticipated battery life was because I didn't charge it every time. I would say maybe once out of every four outings, I would charge it. And again, the perk is that by removing this top turret, you have an external battery. So if you just keep an extra one in your pocket, have one in and there, if 
you are out long enough or forgot to charge it, it is easy enough to do a hot swap without shutting the scope down and missing out on any of the potential action. Not a single freeze, uh, no pixels dying on me, nothing like that. Like I said, pretty boring in terms of the reliability of the optic. And I expected that because if you're gonna charge $7,000 for a product, it better be a very well polished product. And in terms of not only the user interface, but the reliability and the function of this optic, it was pretty flawless. So hopefully the details and uh, you know collected footage in this video help you determine if that is a price tag that is worth it to you or not. Like I said, this is probably the best thermal optic I have personally tested on the channel to date, but it is also the most expensive. So there's definitely a correlation there. Obviously there's exceptions to the rule and we get very excited when there are those exceptions, but this is a high dollar, high performing thermal optic. Now in general, the user experience behind this optic was really pleasing and I was very happy to see that the user experience got improved towards the end of the review with the latest firmware update. So Pulsar added a green hot color palette for those that prefer green hot. I'm told that there are some of you guys that exist. I personally am a white or black hot kind of guy, but hey, to each their own, they added that palette by request of users. So they are acknowledging user requests and user feedback. The biggest thing to point out that was improved is some quick access menu functions. So before you had to go through the menu system to change color palettes. Now they have changed the buttons on the rear of the scope to be able to quickly toggle through the thermal palettes that you have enabled. So for me, I only have the target mode, which I think they call red glow or something, uh, white hot and black hot. So those are the three I'll toggle through because I find them the most useful. Sometimes it is, you know, valuable to toggle between different color palettes depending on what you're scanning for, if you want more or less contrast in the environment, etc. So I do like the quick access toggling of color palettes without going through the optic itself. So that is a useful feature. I'm glad that they changed. And the biggest improvement while using it is they optimize the laser rangefinder. The actual ranging box telling you the distance is now not obstructing field of view. They put it up and out of the way of the user's um, interface inside the optic. That's everything summarized in a nutshell for you. But if there's things I left out, please do leave them in a comment below. I will try to get back to you if at all possible. Like I said, guys, uh, Patreon is now the best way to get in touch with me. There are some awesome things going on over there. We basically have some new chat rooms. It's like a Discord server where we're exchanging information, ideas, etc. And as of November 1st, we're giving away the second set of night vision in the past six months. So pretty good odds there for winning you some nods. So with that, I think that's all I have for you on the XL60. I do wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video if you're still hanging around. And as always, have a good one.